Hello YouTube and welcome back to another 3D ROS tutorial. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up basic image planes in Autodesk Maya. So to set these reference planes up there's two ways of doing things. So the simplest way is going to view image plane import image but for this you want to be in the side view so it knows where to project the image. So I'm going to quickly press spacebar which brings up this menu. If it doesn't for you, you can just left click this area here. And then click on the area you want to have the image plane selected at. And then just press spacebar and it should full screen that side view. So in the side view, I'm just going to go a view, image plane, import image. And then I'm going to find my image reference in this case my banana and then when we press open there's our image plane and it's the correct aspect ratio sometimes I don't like to use this way and it's all down to personal preference so the way that I use sometimes is I just create a normal plane I scale it out and I get rid of the subdivisions and then if I find the image I want. I'll copy and paste the folder location and then I'll hold right click with the plane selected and I'll go down to assign favorite material and I'll go to Lambert and I'll left click Lambert. So if we go to the attribute editor Lambert and then change the color checkbox and we'll select it as a file. And now if we hit the folder icon to browse our files I'll paste in the file location and get the reference image we want. And now to show it, we'll press this checkbox here, textured, and there it is. However, you can see that it's not the correct aspect ratio. So to fix this, you want to select the plane and go to the channel box. Now we we'll want to find the resolution of the image. So I'm going to go to my image folder, right click the image, properties. Then go to, down to details, 1280 by 905. 1280 by 905. And I type that in there. And now if you scale from the center, it'll be the same. Okay, that's fine for simple objects like the banana. However, if you've got more complex blueprints like this, you want to be able to set it up correctly. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to the top down view because it's facing the top and I'm just going to put on textured on this view again and zoom all the way out and I'll hide the grid. So with the plane selected, if I go to the cut tool, which you can find under mesh tools and then multi cut. And now if I hold down control and go along one of the edges, I can create a cut loop and then left, left click to place while holding down control and then it'll place a cut loop there and I'm just going to cut around our objects making sure you cut it quite close but don't lose any detail so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all the areas that don't have the bits that I want in. So I'm just going to click the bits that I do want and then hold shift and left click drag and that will deselect all the ones that were selected and select the inverse of that and I'm just going to hit delete. So now we're left with the different sections. So once we do that I'm going to go back into the perspective view and then you can go a mesh separate and then that'll separate each of the sections into its own object. I'm just going to select them all and center the pivot, modify center pivot and that'll just put the pivot of them all in the center. Now I'm going to snap them to the grid so they're in the right location. So to do that I'm going to turn on grid snapping up here and I'm just going to move it to the origin. So that's correct. 
Now we move this to the origin, but this wants to rotate 90 degrees because it's the side. So I'm going to hit E and then rotate, but I'm going to hold J while I rotate, and that should snap it, but I've got that turned off. So mine snaps automatically. So if you go to tool settings, which is this icon here, and you go on a step snap, if you go on a relative, you change the snapping amount, so 45, 90, 22.5. And if it's off, that means when you hold J, it'll turn it on, and then you let go of J, it'll turn it off. Or, if you like me, just keep it on relative, and then it'll snap automatically, and when you hold J, it'll be off. So, now we've got that rotated. Oh yeah, one thing to note, for some reason, after Maya 2018, sometimes transform constraint is always on by default, and I don't know why they've done this. So you just want to make sure it's not on edge or surface, you want to make sure it's off, or your face will squish like this. So we'll turn that off and rotate now. And that should work with the rotation on. But it's not. Okay, so I'm back. Before it was deforming funny. Like when I pressed the object and I rotated it, it started squishing. And for some reason, it is doing this when the objects are grouped. So I'm just gonna press the outliner here, press the group, and go to edit, ungroup. And now when you rotate it, it should rotate fine. Now it doesn't always do this, so I'm not sure why it was doing that, but that's how you fix it. So I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees so it's at the side, and then just like the rest I'm going to move these to the center of the grid, and I'm going to rotate them the correct way. I'm just going to move this along a bit so the front has more room, and just with grid snapping still turned on, just gonna move them. And then we'll move the front of the car to the front. Now you can see the front and the back aren't aligned with this side view. So I'll just move this down. And then obviously if this doesn't line up, you can just push things around again. But this should be okay. So now you have that set up. You can go to any of the side views, make sure you turn on textured and zoom out, and there we go. So you might notice we have the back here but not the front. And this is because it's a side view and it only shows one of the sides. So if we go to panel, orthographic, new, and then we've got options front, back, right, left. So if we go to left, that is now the front and it creates a new view plane here. So one problem you can come across when using blueprints like this is you can't see part of your model. So if I create a cube here and I'm modeling it from the side view like this and you go to the front I can no longer see it and also I can't see the details of the reference because of my cube. So what you want to do is go to x-ray mode here and turn that on and it makes both transparent but sometimes this doesn't work for me so what I like to do is with my cube selected go to the attribute editor and whatever material is assigned to the object that I'm modeling I just reduce the transparency that way we don't get any transparency in the reference because when you've got transparency in it it'd be hard to see some of the details and what I do from there to stop me not being able to see the front and the back I just move them both to the centre but I usually offset them a little bit so I don't get any overlapping and then from there I can see my cube from the front and the back but when you select the vertices as well you might end up selecting your reference images so if you select your reference images you go to the channel box, under display, create a new layer, 
and press this button twice with R. And now you can no longer select them until you change this layer settings again. That just about sums up this quick tutorial. I know it was a bit longer than expected, but I wanted to make sure that I showed you all of the little things that you could look into and some of the problems that might arise. I hope you found this helpful and have fun using your reference images to model whatever you'd like. Uh, please make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.